Hello guys, this is Joseph from Joe Concepts. Um, thank you for coming back to my channel for another tutorial. In this week, we're going to look into visibility tool. And in this visibility tool, we're going to be looking at how to make use of that and utilize its functionality in our models and all that. So let's get into the tutorial. First thing you're going to do is go to the object you want to add the display tag to. So this is the object that I'm going to add the display tag to. So once you select the object, you go to tag, then you go to cinema 4D tag, you're going to see display. Yeah. So once you have the display tag added, then you have some options here. By the way, this is a shader ball. You could go online to Google and search for shader ball. Then you can see a particular shader ball you can work with but this is just for training purpose and to show us what this does so if you select the cinema for uh, display tag you have three sections here the basic which shows you the name you have the tag and the ghosting so here in the tag the first option here is um this um shader mode and basically how display tab works is that you have to use any of this mode and once you click on use it brings out this and some the way this shader ball work, uh, display works is that some are for viewport um purpose and some are for rendering purpose so now why do you use display tag sometimes you have a scene which is very large and you want the response of the scene to be really good you want it to be responsive so you could use this um, display tag to reduce some of the information on polygon count or display mode so that your scene will be responsive or if you want to render a particular thing you can also use it this, this display tag to do that so let's look at the first one so this first one is for the scene responsiveness so if you go to this garage shading and the thing with this is that once you go to this display here and choose any of this mode it affects it universally it affects every object in the scene so if i have for instance if i have um, a box here and bring the box somewhere here i have another object let's say a sphere reduce this sphere and bring it somewhere here now once i change anything here it affects every object in my scene universally you can see so if i change this to line it affects every object except the one i've added this but, but if i delete this notice everything is affected so maybe that is what you want you can just come in and do that but if you want to affect only one object so instead of you making use of this, you could just add the display tag and that will affect the only object you've added that stuff to. So if I go to this um, shader or select it, go to tag, go back to cinema 4D tag and display, you notice if I now come to this use and change from grass shading with grass shading with line, it only affects this object and nothing in the same. So that is the usefulness of a display tag so everything can do here can also be done here. so if you don't want wireframe you want skeleton it shows you the skeleton it shows you the box it shows you the isocam of the object so i hope you understand that so that's the difference between using the tag and coming to this place so we are not talking about this now i think i can delete this object so let's look at other things here so this is self-explanatory and this is just showing whatever mode you want, hidden line or whatsoever thing you want. So I will get this back to the initial state. So the next one is um level of detail. So now you cannot see that effect now until I go to wireframe mode. So by the by the way, NB will take it to wireframe mode that's in a reversal mode wireframe all right so if you go to this level of detail and you reduce this notice what happens so maybe for instance 
you don't want so much of detail so that your viewports will be responsive now the thing with this level of detail is that it doesn't affect your render level of detail the level of detail on your render is still the same thing it's just for your viewport so put that in mind the first one works for the viewport this next one also works for the viewport so i'm going to take this back to 100 so it depends on what level of detail you want to have in your viewport so you can just choose it so that the viewport will be responsive All right. so the next one is um visibility the visibility tells you how visible it's going to be but this visibility is not seen in the viewport that is for the render purpose so if you change this information now notice the visibility is 50 percent of what i have right? but i can't see that but if you go to rendering this object you are going to see that the visibility of the object is not as um as you can see in the viewport is not this um actual opaque object you're going to see a form of transparency to it and all that so just let's wait for this to render out so you could just see so you can already see that the object is you are seeing some parts of this object going through this so that is what the visibility does it just you can use it to i actually use this visibility for one of my projects where i was trying to do um, a solar panel for a building then i had to change the visibility of the building for me to show the wire connection of that so that is just one usefulness of it you can also use it for so many things so you can already see I can see the inner parts going through and all that so that's what the visibility does and the thing with this visibility is that the lower the value the more invisible it's going to be and the more the render time is going to be it's going to take so you should put that take that note on so let me take this back to 100 just want to give you an overview of that now for this back face curling you can notice that as I activate this, see some part of this object crumbles on itself and goes invisible. And the reason for this is that what backface calling, what it does is to take any part of the model which is um, reversed. What I mean by that is that as your modeling there's every polygon has the front face and the back space uh or the back here yeah, of, of any model so how do you know the difference between the front and the back the thing is that when you select the polygon that makes up the front you have a yellow object in your selection so let me see this for instance so if i go to my polygon and i control a to select everything you notice that what i have is yellowish in color you can see my selection but if i go to this one which is this and i hit ctrl a I, let me get rid of this first so you can see very well so if i select this and ctrl a you notice that instead of it having the yellow you're having a hue of blue this is telling you that this is the back face on so this is flipped the normal of this part of this uh, object is flipped so what you're having is you're have you having the inside facing out while the outside is facing in unlike for this the actual out exterior part of this object is actually facing outside and the interior part is that's why i have this yellowish color but for this one you have a bluish tint so now what this back face calling does is that it takes into consideration every object that is flipped every uh, model that is flipped whereby you have the interior part facing outside or i hope you understand what i'm trying to say so it's going to make that invisible so we know that this object the inner part is the one outside and the normal outside part is not facing and that's why we can't see this but so you can use that to troubleshoot your model 
to check which part is flipped so that I can go and resolve. So in this case, if you check this, I notice that this is going invisible. What you do is go back to that object. Once you go back to the object, have it selected, then right click, you can say reverse normal. So as soon as you reverse the normal and you go back, you can notice that even though it's activated, you don't see that anymore. So you have your model corrected. So I just thought you should know about that. So if I go back and flip it again, reverse and see, notice that is up. So that is for the box, um, back face coiling. Then you have a texture. So for this texture, I think I'm going to go into another scene. I'm going to go into another scene. That is just talking about texture and this. So if I go to my window and go to the second scene, which I have, I have a, an object which I've added dynamics to. So it's just an object bouncing. And I've added texture to this. So if I go to this ball and right click on it, sorry, this is cut enough. Then you can go to display tab. Then if I go to texture, so by default texture will be on, but if I don't want texture to be on for this object, just uncheck that. So texture will go off. So that is just for, but it does not affect your render. I need you to know that. And the next one is reflection. You can notice um, the reflection on this object. If I don't want this reflection on it, I can go to the reflection and deactivate it. Then you don't have any form of reflection on this object. So you can already see when you activate and deactivate. All right, for this tessellation and open uh, OpenGL, I don't really see the difference. I think that works with your render setting. I think so because activating this, deactivating, I don't really see anything. Even if your render is activated, but if I deactivate it and still render, I kind of have similar render. So I don't really know the usefulness of this distillation here in this purpose all right so and also for open gel for the open gel i think you have to have your open gel render selected before that works so um moving on to ghosting so this ghosting is used for animation purpose for you to for you to see your trailing of your objects um if i click on and enable you don't see anything yet the reason is because i need to first activate i need to calculate this ghosting so for me to do the calculation i have to scroll down and calculate the caching then you can choose the range that you want that for so let's start with let's just go simple with this default setting so if i calculate this it gives me the ghosting of this object. It's just like creating a matrix effect. Whatever you have some parts of this object. And so how this works is that it shows you the frame before and the frame after. But let's come to this um, first option, which is the draw mode. So the by default, the draw mode you have is an um, object, so it's giving you the object and drawing it out. But if you don't want an object, you want point to choose point, you have that. Yeah, you could also choose axis, so it gives you the axis. So as you check, as the axis rotates, you see that in this ghosting mode. All right, so you can also have trail, so it gives you the trail. On the object, you have multi trail. So, what multi trail does is just that it takes different points on this object and creates a trail for it. So, you have velocity also. Velocity will trail the velocity. So, how fast is it and how slow? That's how you have this intensity of this. So, you can notice that this coloring here is faded. It's because at this point, the velocity is low. So, it fades, but at the high 
at the highest point of velocity you have the color being um, saturated more and all that so so let's go to the object mode so you have that so you can also set the number of um, trail you want the number of drop ghosting you want for each of these options whether for frames before or frames after so every time you have this bluish color this is giving you the frames before and the frames after so if i reduce this i can start to have a feel of so if i don't want to have any frame before i can just zero it so i don't have any frame before the only thing i have is frame after all right but i don't know why this i think this is flipped this before should be this yellow because you have the animation going before this object and this after should be the bluish one then the animation that goes after this object but anyways so if this is not what you want you can change it back to 12 and make this zero so you have the frame i think this should be the correct one all right so i hope they can change this in the upcoming um, version so then let's look at um the frame per second or the frame step this frame step will either increase once you increase it reduces this value and once you reduce it increases the number of ghosting that you have so depending on whatever you want you can choose that all right so i hope um we understand that so for this range i've not really played with this use range i think you could just set what range you want if you want to start from between 40 and this so it calculates from 40 okay i think that is it so your calculation of the ghosting starts from 40 to 90 so if you want calculation to start from 20 from 20 so you just come and change it to 20 then calculation starts from 20 and the ghosting starts starts drawing the ghosting from 20 all right then you can take this back then use keyframe you can also use a keyframe and set whatever you want but i hope you get the idea so that is the visibility tag so you could use this for your advantage and for whatever you choose to and um, if you feel this you've learned something new in this please give me a thumbs up like this video share it and give me a comment if you feel there are other things that I should have mentioned or that you know of which I've not, I didn't mention in this so that we can also all learn together so I think I'm ending my tutorial here to have a wonderful day and god bless you oh by the way if you're new to my channel please do subscribe that means a lot to me it helps me to continue in this tutorial and bring up new things that people don't really look into so if you're new please do subscribe and hit the bell button so that every time i drop a new video you get notified and all that so thank you and have a wonderful day god bless you